Hi, my name is Todd Botterill of Botterill Sales from Newton, Manitoba. This is the Monosem vacuum planter. It is actually the first precision uh, vacuum planter in the, that was made in the world, um, or the first one available in North America. Uh, Monosem has always had a, a tradition of having a very high quality product. And for a long time, they've actually kind of specialized in niche markets like vegetables. Uh, we see a lot of them in California in the vegetable market. Um, then they expanded to twin row corn. There's been a lot of interest in twin row corn in the U.S. Uh, so they expanded that. Usually, you know, if it's something new, they are usually at the, the, the forefront of it. Uh, and that's why a lot of guys went to them for canola planting. Uh, we saw a lot of guys in southern Alberta start with it in canola. Uh, we're seeing that expand now into the rest of western Canada. We have units running in Oklahoma. Uh, and one of the things that allowed Monosem to jump into that market fairly quickly is their experience with small seeds like vegetables. So we're doing a lot of carrots, you know, cabbage, radish, those sort of things. Uh, so really going to canola wasn't that difficult for them. And I think one of the, the nicest parts about working with Monosem is they try to make as much stuff available directly from them uh, as possible. So when we look at the plates, guys don't have to drill their own plates. We basically get them off the shelf. If we don't have the right plate for you already, tell us what you want and we'll make it. Um, other little things like the secondary air system, um, we're the first ones to introduce that from as an OEM basis. So instead of having, uh, you know, we've had cases with canola seed treatment flaking off and that's causing issues with uh, the holes plugging. Um, so they took technology from the vegetable planters where we were having the same issue with seed treatments and we put that onto the NG plus meter. Uh, and that's going to allow us to actually blow the holes out as we operate. So a customer doesn't have to stop after so many revolutions and, and uh, turn the meters over and, and clean them out. This will happen as you drive and it's been working very good. We've actually had chances to operate it in the field down in Oklahoma this last fall and it worked really well. Um, What's ni nice about that system too is we actually do have an air cleaner system built into it too. So you don't have to worry about blowing in large amounts of residue. The air will be cleaned, blows out the holes, and you just keep running. So this would be where the seed feeds in through the hopper into this carrying piece here. The seed is picked up down around this area. It comes around and we actually have a brass singulator. And I'll show you on the other unit and you can look at how the singulator works. But it's essentially a brass piece that's kind of serrated teeth on it. That knocks off the excess seed so that we have only one seed per hole instead of two or three. The seed then comes around with the vacuum sucking it, of course, against the plate. And as it comes around here, on the back of the plate, we actually reduce the vacuum and then eventually eliminate the vacuum. And at the same time, we have this brass ejector block. So the seed comes along, and I have it set basically that it comes along, it is held against the plate until it touches the ejector block, and the ejector block taps it off the plate. And this is the inside. So you can see here the brass singulator that we spoke about. This is adjustable. You'll set it, move it up or down depending on how aggressively you want to tap the seed. We can actually, with our adjustment, we're not only adjusting the singulator, but we adjust some of the vacuum as well. So if we're picking up too many seeds, not only will we move the singulator down, we'll release some of the vacuum, kind of fine tune the vacuum right here at the meter. So then the seed again comes around and on our cover is our brass ejector that would tap the seed off about here. Seed drops down the seed tube and into the ground. So, you know, when we talk about the difference between a planter and an air drill, with a planter, we're worried about what happens to the seed in this drop here. So we're talking, you know, 18 to 20 inch drop, as opposed to 200 feet of hose that you see on an air drill. So there's very little area for there to be seed damage done, uh, not as much area for seed to bounce or, and, uh, and gather. So, you know, you want to make sure that when you singulate the seed here, it stays spaced as it goes down the tube. And there are several different options of different tubes out there that would allow you to keep the seed from bouncing as well. Uh, I think a big thing with the planter that a lot of guys miss on is the depth control. Um, it's not touched on, I think, enough by the planter companies because they're used to it. Years ago, everybody essentially came up with the same sort of system for depth control. So in order to sell their planter, they focused on singulation and who had the best singulating system. And although we do have some pretty significant savings by going to you know, singulating the seed, the yield benefit comes out of the depth control because we essentially we dial in our depth here with this knob back here. So we have infinitely adjustable depth control here. Okay, we set this three quarter of an inch deep. We actually have three quarter inch. The double disc opener it opens the trench. We have this cast point here that will actually open up and, and firm the bottom of the trench and make a perfect V. Uh, then we drop the seed into that. 
So we have the ideal seed placement here. Not only for depth, but it's not scattered all over the place. It's tough for a hole opener to compete with that, even with a precision hole drill, because even though you know, those, the uh, depth control wheels are very close, you still have about a two foot contour depth, whereas we're essentially a zero contour depth. Um, but you also have the, just the way that the hoe operates with the soil. You know, when, when you start running a hoe opener and you blow the soil open, uh, the soil isn't going to consistently move, you know, just one inch deep. You're going to have it bring up some lumps here. If it's wetter or drier, it'll lump it up. It's very difficult for a hoe opener to maintain a consistent depth. When you look at crops like corn, a quarter inch of depth variance will affect your yield a lot more than singulation will. And I really think we're going to see the same sort of thing with canola. Um, so with the two depth wheels, and we have this one taken off right now with the two depth wheels and they actually walk like a walking tandem. So that helps maintain a consistent depth even in rougher grounds. Uh, it supports the weight of the unit uh, very well. And then this here is your closing wheels. Now there's several different options of closing wheels. Uh, here we have like an aftermarket uh, Lofquist wheel that helps uh, essentially almost like harrowing the sea trench. In, uh, in wetter conditions it'll actually close the seat trench a little more aggressively, break up any sidewall compaction. Typically we run these V-style closing wheels that'll squeeze the trench back shut again. We also have the option, uh, something more like what you see on the case planter with closing disc and the six inch wheel for guys wanting a smoother finish. Uh, so there's a lot of options. And of course with any planter, it's kind of like buying a hot rod. Uh, it's so customizable. If you don't like the way it's set up, there's so many different attachments out there between road cleaners, uh, depth control wheels, closing wheels, that we can fine tune this unit for your operations. That's one thing I've liked about the Monosim company is they, they consider every planter to be a custom build. There's none that are really cookie cutters. Uh, so we do our best to get you the right unit for your conditions.